HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have highlights from the Hillers Hockey State Finals appearance. Cynthia Franza and Jerry Holland stop by to talk about the upcoming Creative Circles Arts event and the Hopkinton Police Department took on the Special Olympics team and their annual basketball game. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about, including scenes from the annual Girl Scout Troop 64050 Edible Book Festival. The Hopkinton School Bus Application Period for 2019-2020 is now open. Students in grades 7 through 12 in the school year 2019 through 2020 who wish to ride the school bus pay a fee for busing. For full information on school busing for next school year, please visit the Hopkinton Public Schools website transportation homepage. The deadline for fee-based busing is May 1st, 2019. Girl Scout Troop 65040 hosted their fourth annual edible book festival at the Hopkinton Public Library. The festival featured some terrific books made into some very creative, tasty treats. Um, so this is the fourth annual Edible Book Festival, which is a baking competition where people um, bake things that have to do with books and then people vote on them and there's a winner, it's really fun. Yeah. Here's a look at some of the entries and the awards ceremony. Make this one? Yeah. yeah. This is Marco, but it's made out of your turkey. How long did it take you to make it? How long did it take you to make it? One time? I'm not the only one to make it. Oh. You make this one? Yeah, I need this one. How long did it take you? A long time. A long time? Very nice.
Voices in the Universe with the Rosie Project. This past weekend, the Hopkinton Police Department met up with the Special Olympics team for their annual basketball game. Here's a look at the fun-filled afternoon. The annual Special Olympics vs. Hopkinton Police Department basketball game took place this past Saturday at Hopkinton Middle School. Despite lots of practice by the Hopkinton Police Department, the talented Special Olympics team was able to put up triple digits and stay undefeated, taking the game 100-50. to 50. Here's a look at what was a fun time for all at Brown Gymnasium.
So, Chief, you guys came up uh, short again. And again, I can't I think believe it's the it. first time they've ever put up uh, triple digits on you. Really? What was the score again? 100 to 50. Oh, no. <laughs> we'll try to forget about that. <laughs> Are the rumors true that you're going to have a basketball court installed at the police station yes. to get some practice in? We need a little practice. This is a tough year. <laughs> Hopefully, we get a few hires this year. And uh, the big question we're going to ask him at the interview, can you play basketball? <laughs> Another uh, year, another police Special Olympics basketball game. Uh, the Special Olympics, they put up triple digits today. I think that's the oh first time. Oh my goodness, I didn't realize that we were going to score as many points. There's been a lot of trash talk before the game that the police were working hard in anticipation of their 14th or 15th year. But we, uh, we laid it on them. We had some uh, strong play today. Absolutely, and did everybody have a good time out there? They always do. It's the event that we all look forward to. Uh, from the beginning of the year. We can't wait for it to happen. All right, well, congratulations on staying undefeated. Thank you very much. <laughs> Still to come on HCAM News, the Hillers take on Wachusett at the TD Garden in Boston in the Division Three State Finals. Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. And right after the break, Jerry Holland and Cynthia Franza join us in studio to talk about the upcoming Creative Circles Arts event. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Tom Nappy here with Cynthia Franza and Jerry Holland. Ladies, how are you today? Good. Very good. You? Thank you, Tom. Thank yeah. you for having yeah. us. Oh, my pleasure. And I understand you have a, a Creative Circles event coming up. Uh, could you tell us uh, what Creative Circles is all about? Um, Cynthia and I uh, created, created Creative Circles uh -huh. uh, to... Yeah, you, you launched our program in February 2017. You are the co-hosts, the co-directors of this program. Our mission is build a strong community through the arts, mm -hmm. an inclusive community through the arts, sharing contributions, inspiring each other, and bringing together art and community. This is our mission. This is our goal with our program. And I understand there's an event coming up very soon. Uh, could you tell us what to expect at that event and also the details of uh, when and where it is? Okay. Um, the event is going to be at the Hopkinton Art Center. Um, it's um, March 23rd. Uh, no, actually, it's not March 23rd. Uh, this is, uh, the That's hour. the drop-off. Uh -huh. The event, <laughs> sorry, uh -huh. is March 28th um, at the Art Center on um, Hayden Road, off of Hayden Road. And uh, we have a drop-off um, uh, on um, Friday, the 23rd, from 3 to 6 p.m. And Saturday, the 23rd, from 10 to 1 p.m. Um, it's all-inclusive. Uh, it can be any kind of form of art that's a small mm -hmm. art program so small um, is good uh, it can be hand carving it can it, it's all inclusive music dance performance visual art, yes yeah. so um, we've had this program before and it's been very successful yes this is a um, the round robin event the mm -hmm. reception round robin event it will be March 28 Thursday March 28 between 6 30 p.m. and 8 30 p.m. but if you are visual art and you'd like to drop off your pieces or art to work for this in the center for the arts mm -hmm. you have to come Friday uh, March 22nd between uh, 3 and 6 p.m. Or Saturday, March 23rd, between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. in Bring Your Art. They, it's a small work show called Creative Circles Small Work Show. That means the piece has to be no larger than 14 inches in any directions if you're bringing artwork for our program. But if you're not an artist That's and you right. like to enjoy the program, you can come for the reception and round robin event on March 28th and just enjoy the community and the art you have displayed there. And the art you are like sharing, like poetry, yes. you have songs, performance, folk dance, Indian yeah, folk had, dance. We had a um, lady who came last year and she was amazing. A, uh -huh. yeah, a dance. And where was she from, Sinchon? Oh, she was new in Hopkinton. Okay. Uh, she lived a few months, mm -hmm. and I just you just invite her, and she came to do a performance. Yeah. and she was very. Excited. She did a dance yeah. for her for her culture. Uh huh. So um, that was very 
Interesting. Entertaining, yeah. <laughs> very entertaining, and it's what we want to have the diversity um, in the community, anybody in the arts, and you don't actually have, you can come and just enjoy the program. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have uh, submitted to be an artist, anything. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So um, we've had a really Yeah, last year we had 25 event. artists coming with different pieces, mm -hmm. uh, around 25 artists, and uh, you you, I hope with this interview we can come more artists this year. Mm -hmm. So this is very good for us. It's a free event. Um, we do ask if anybody wants to donate maybe five dollars to the center. You know, just, but it yeah, actually just for, is a free mm -hmm. event. Yeah, so, so you can uh, come enjoy. Yeah, just come and enjoy. Terrific. And is there a, a website or something if somebody wanted to get involved or find out more information? Yes, you have a creative circles arts.com. So we can go there and we have all the information, how the, you have to submit, how you have to write, or how you can participate, you have everything there. CreativeCirclesArts.com. Excellent. So uh, March 28th at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts, mm -hmm. Creative Circles uh, for the Arts. Mm -hmm. uh, ladies, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Oh, I have it. Some, just one little sure. note. Um, the exhibit will be on display between March 26th and May 9th. So you can come and see. Hopkinton Hillers Hockey made their first ever appearance in the state finals this year. Here is a look at the highlights from the Division III state championship between Hopkinton and Wachusett. On Sunday, March 17th, it was St. Patrick's Day and state championship time for South Sectional Champion Hopkinton Hillers Hockey. They took on Central Sectional Champion the Wachusett Mountaineers at the TD Garden. The Mountaineers struck first with 12.01 left in the first period. Racing in, Rogers. The Mountaineers have control. It's a nice job by Grant Gardula cutting off Rogers. Now a break here, Grant Gardula racing in, and there's a Wachusett goal. One to nothing. 12.01 left to go. The Hillers were in a change there. Wachusett was able to sneak down through the middle. Wachusett struck again at 10.26 left in the second period. John Gardner bangs it off the end boards towards Murray. Now racing ahead is Gardula. Gardula up against Simos. On the far side, gets the shot off, turned away by Thomas. And now trying to swing it around, and he will put it in. Well, he missed the shot, caught it on the deflection, swung it around, and popped it in. The Hillers were able to strike back at 129 left in the second. And now White Sox going to try to sneak it around. Up to Saparoshitz. Saparoshitz. A shot turned away by Kabusa. Now another shot out in front. Loose puck. And yeah. it is going to be knocked in. Will Quinlan able to knock it in. And the Hillers are on the scoreboard. That's just what they needed there, Tom. They were all over him in the offensive end. Finally got a good break. In the third, Wachusett went back up by two goals at 9.07 left. Far side, he'll wrap it around. And behind the net now, Shane is able to get in there. 42 seconds left on the power play. There's a shot out in front and a loose puck, and it's knocked in by Skagerlin. Unfortunately, Cole thought that went behind the net, and it just bounced back out front. The Hillers struck at 5.10 left to get within one goal. 15 left to go. The Hillers with the man advantage for the next two minutes. And they are 0 for 3 on the man advantage, but they have to get one here. Simos wide to the right. And there's a goal, Rogers! Kyle Rogers off the deflection. 5-10 left to go. 3-2. to two. Just a great face-off win there. That was the key. Getting that puck back over. Good pressure towards the end of the game, but Wachusett was able to hang on for the 3-2 win and the Division III state title. This was the first time the Hillers boys hockey team ever reached the state title. Congratulations on an incredible run, Coach McPherson and the Hopkinton Hillers boys hockey team.
A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, March 22nd at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts chat with the author of a new town meeting article, Amy Grove, on a brand new Hopkinton Coffee Break. Uh, it's, it's actually, we want to change um, the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen to the Hopkinton Select Board. Right. And um, mm -hmm. it all happened when I discovered that other towns were doing it, and I got jealous. I know, I'm kind of c competitive in a way. Mm -hmm. would, call it team little, spirit. You know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always mad when Hopkinton isn't first. On Monday, March 25th at 6.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, March 27th at 6.30 p.m., Mary Arnott sits down with the new Hopkinton Senior Center Director, Amy Beck, on a new episode of All About Hopkinton. But it is uh, a big financial responsibility, mm -hmm. and so uh, you mentioned the Friends of the Senior Center. How else are funds um, accumulated to keep things going? Well, we do take donations, so if people are interested in supporting things that are happening at the Senior Center, we love that. Um, I know right now we have a veterans breakfast once a month for our veterans, and people do like to sponsor that. And so they would contact me, and we would let them know what's involved and what's the cost, and, and they can sponsor that for our veterans. And at 7 p.m., Senior Law Attorney Arthur Bergeron returns to the Senior Center to bring us Elder Law for Couples on a brand new HCAM TV special. And also on HCAM, Ed... The Spring 2019 Music in Our Schools Concert Series, as well as the Hillers Ice Hockey Playoffs vs. Lowell game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM's shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and happy spring, everyone. here and I am with Elaine Lazarus and uh, Elaine for those that don't know can you explain uh, what you do here for the town of Hopkinton? Um, a longtime planner with the town currently assistant town manager and working with the planning board on this year's zoning changes. And I understand there's uh, a lot of zoning changes being talked about a lot of public hearings are happening uh, can you talk about what some of the big topics are right now? Sure. Um, just wanted to mention that the planning board has, is required by law to hold a public hearing on every zoning change, regardless of who submits it. So this year, the planning board's proposing some, and the, there are several citizens' petitions. So one of the, the, um, the most important, perhaps, are changes in the Osmond Overlay District, which is uh, applicable to legacy farms. And some of those changes um, try to unravel some of our language that contradicts each other and some housekeeping changes. And others um, allow um, just a, a better administration and management of the uses that are there. So for example, uh, we have some language regarding senior housing. Um, and it's a currently a project under construction off at Legacy North. And um, the zoning requires over 55 uh, and no children under 18, and it also requires affordable units, but the state um, will not certify affordable units where children are prohibited, so we have to resolve that language one way or another by changing the affordable housing um, restrictions or changing the age-restricted 
restrictions. So that's something that town meeting will get to get to think about. Now, is there a public hearing coming up on that? There is a public hearing. Uh, it, uh, the public hearing opened on February 25th. This particular topic um, wasn't discussed, and that was continued to March 25th. So on March 25th, uh, the public will have an opportunity to, to weigh in on that. If people can't attend, they can send me an email or send the planning board an email or a letter, and it will be uh, reviewed by the board. And uh, what do you think the overall feeling about this is? Do you, do you feel like people are going to support this zoning change, or do you, do you feel like that it's going to get some uh, pullback? I don't know. I, I expect every zoning change has its pros and cons, and that those will be discussed, and we'll see where it goes. But people are entitled to participate and voice their opinion. And uh, what are some of the other uh, zoning changes going on that uh, you feel are going to be uh, a, a big topic at the upcoming town meeting? Well, there are a couple of citizens' petitions that try to get at the issue of managed growth. And what those petitions are proposing is to limit the number of building permits that could be issued. Uh, one of the articles proposes a one-year period, and the other one is over a three-year period. So uh, and during this time, the town would be um, doing some planning and thinking about how it's going to manage growth. So those are citizens' petitions. Those proponents will appear at the hearing and make their case. Uh, and the public will have an opportunity to weigh in on those. And when are these public hearings happening? March 25th uh, at Town Hall. March 25th at's at Town Hall. 7.30 p.m. Terrific. Um, and just uh, kind of looking at all these... Uh